Good afternoon, judges. My name is Isabella, to my right is Daniel, and to my left is Taryn and Andy. And together, we make Foodprint. At Foodprint, we are extremely concerned about the issue of food waste, as we found 2.2 million discarded tons of food, 30 billion dollars are wasted, and 20% of all groceries are thrown out annually. Yet those statistics are subject to Canada alone, you can just imagine the worldwide implications. At Footprint, we believe that those statistics is what driven us to create change. Therefore, our mission at Footprint is to lead the movement against food waste one step at a time. Our journey led us to our problem. And thanks to our innovative approach, we created a competitive advantage as we uniquely list your fridge inventory, give you relevant recipe suggestions, act as a shopping guide, and remind you for your nearly expired foods. Now what exactly is our product composed of? Well, there are three major components, the first of which is the radio frequency identification, or the RFID tags. Now, these tags contain all the information of the food item, including its nutritional and expirational value. The second is the reader. Mounted on the fridge, the reader acts as a hybrid between a barcode scanner and an RFID reader, as it both dispenses and scans the tags. Lastly, there's a brain. Using Raspberry Pi circuitry, it acts as the midway communicator between the reader and the consumer, as it both interprets the data and sends that information via an app such that the consumer can see all of their information. Now, a simple demonstration of how to use. This is our prototype. Now, imagine that you have just come home from a grocery shopping trip, and the very first item you take out of your bag is a carton of blueberries. Now, mounting the carton of blueberries barcode in front of the reader, you scan it in an upwards motion, thereby dispensing the RFID tag onto the blueberries and transferring all the data from the barcodes onto that very RFID tag. Now, how do we know that this product in particular is what our consumers want? Well, this all boils down to our market validation. Now, based upon our survey of over 200 individuals and 50 in-person interviews, we determined that the impression of this very product garnered over 80% of individuals to say that they were very willing to try and purchase it. How willing? Well, we identified their pain point, such that 75% said they were unsatisfied with current solutions to food waste, garnering us over 150 email signups, showcasing their interest in our product. Additionally, we asked how much would they be willing to pay for it, and the majority answered between the range of $200 to $300, which is why we priced ourselves at $250. Additionally, individuals will have the opportunity to pay $4 per month for premium subscriptions, which offers these features, or use the basic features of our app for free, which also includes ads, which serves as another source of revenue for us. So what other alternatives are there? Smart fridges, represented by LG and Samsung, are currently available on the market. However, they do price quite expensive. And food delivery services, such as Fresh Prep and HelloFresh, are quite wasteful in terms of packaging. And food tracking apps like Fridgely simply require too much human input. We've placed ourselves on this chart here due to our competitive advantage, which is our affordability. And we also have the highest investment return, based on our effectiveness to food waste reduction. In addition, we also appreciate the fact that our product can be easily integrated into any lifestyle, making Foodprint the best both economically and environmentally. And we can further talk to competitors upon questioning. So, who are our customers? After serving over 20 people and personally interviewing 50 experts, we have concluded that ideally we would target two demographics. One being busy parents who plan and cook meals for households of four or more, and the second being young professionals who live alone and are unfamiliar with planning and cooking meals. So, how do we acquire these people? Through our validation, we determined that word of mouth, search engine optimizations, as well as a series of other marketing strategies that can be further discussed upon questioning are the most effective way to garner visitors who will be directed to our landing page. From there, we will slip in our prop features and coupon incentives, and finally, encourage our leads to make a purchase through call to actions. So, how much of the market can we actually reach? Through an analysis of financially stable and environmentally conscious households in Vancouver, we predict a reach of 3%. And with our basis in Vancouver, we will expand to the rest of Canada and predict to have 0.6% of the market share by the end of year five. Now how do we get 
it all the way from the product to the target market that Taryn has so expertly described. Well, this all boils down to the supply chain. Beginning with the first three components, that being suppliers, manufacturers, and transportation, as well as all of the companies listed below and above, are actually enterprises that we have contacted directly, and they have stated their vested interest in supplying us with their services when our product becomes a reality. The, set, the next component is warehousing, in which we will begin with garages before expanding into larger warehouse spaces. And finally, retailers, in which we will begin with a three-pronged approach, first with local stores and online platforms, before expanding into those international chains. Additionally, now is a perfect time to enter our industry, that being smartphone products. As here you can see the average Canadian penetration rate performing higher than the global average. And these trends are expected to continue to increase at a compound annual growth rate of 18%. As for our product, it costs a total of $150 per unit, with the most important parts being for the 50 tags, the reader, and the brain. And since we priced ourselves at $250, this leaves us with a gross profit of $100, or a gross profit margin of 40%. As for our startup cost, it totals to $250,000, with the most important parts being for the app development, which deals with the front-end user interface, or the back-end software development. As for our projections, we plan to target the Vancouver market until the end of the second year. From then on, we'll be for the Canadian market until the end of the fifth year, and the sixth year and onward is for the North American market. To validate our sales, we created a month-to-month -month projection such that we break even at the end of the second year. To conclude, we would like to recognize that our business follows the triple bottom line. As our profits only promise to increase, we're good for the people and the local economy, as we will also donate to food banks and we're great for the planet, thanks to green initiatives, overall making us a long-term sustainable business. So what do we ask from you? We would like to utilize your connections for the purpose of beta testing and focus groups. We would also like to utilize your expertise so we get a chance to learn from you. And finally, we would like to utilize your resources, be it suppliers or, or potential retailers. So why should you join us? If you join us today, you get to be a part of our board of advisors. You also get a chance to grow your own professional network thanks to our potential partners, including um, RP Drackby from PH1 and Chris Reed from Forza. And with that, we ask you to join us on our movement to reduce food waste one step at a time. Thank you, and we open the floor to any questions. Thank you, Blueprint League Judges. We're going to go straight into, well, everyone. Okay, first at the back. Oh, hi there. Um, could you just go back to the competitive analysis? I, I'd like to understand more about that business that has the logo F and how you compare to it. Sorry, could you repeat that question? So that, that slide up there, I'd like to understand what that business is with the F logo and oh. how you compare to it. Absolutely. So that is Fridgely, and it is a food tracking app. and um, based, um, in comparison to us, we feel that their processes are quite inadequate due to the fact that um, it requires users to do manual logging. So for those reasons, we have deemed it inadequate. Okay, thank you. So maybe I'm um, the slow one in the room, but I'm going to ask the question. Can you draw for me the direct link between um, what you do and how you reduce food risk? food waste and how much you actually project to re reduce food waste? That's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. And so in terms of our validation, this was also another question that we had in um, both our validation that we presented to you, as well as the fact that um, of our national statistics. So uh, in the validation that we presented in our main slides, it suggested that our consumers believe that Organization and food inventory is a, plays a major role in terms of food waste. This means that based upon the fact that, for example, large families or families as a whole, like Karen mentioned before, they're not entirely sure of what's in their fridge. This is because either mom, dad, brother, sister, etc. continue to buy on their continuous food trips to the store. In addition, in terms of the individuals, like Karen mentioned as well, we also figured out that these individuals are also, because they're super independent as well as very, very busy, they too find it difficult to either be aware and cognizant of what's in their fridge, so either they let things go bad, or they are underprepared, or even worse, they, they um, create too much 
of their food, and they all also have to go to waste. In both instances, there's a lot of food that left, that's either left expired and is thrown out, or is considered completely ignored and is again thrown out. As such, we have determined that this way of in implementing the food waste in terms of understanding what's in your fridge allows people to better understand what's in their fridge, such that they are able to better control their food choices. So could you maybe just walk me through a transaction of how you see this working? Because like, I know I have a ton of food in my fridge that I'm not eating. That's not the issue. I know I'm not eating it. Um, can you show me how your solution actually helps me utilize a greater percentage of that? And are there any studies that you guys looked at or can reference? That would be really helpful. Absolutely. So just going on the um, process itself first, we, will, we have determined that both uh, based upon the fact that you've already tagged everything in your fridge, including the cartons and every other aspect of um, that is perishable, that again is in your fridge, you have all that information on this app here. As you can see, it is a mock-up, but it does allow to list all of the asparagus, your cow's milk, etc., as well as the expiration date that you need to be cognizant of, as well as the color coding in terms of red being near expiration, yellow being somewhat near, and green being you're good to go. Not only that, but based upon the fact that it alerts you to what is nearly to be expired, it also creates recipes for you to provide suggestions in what you can serve. Now, in terms of how do we know this in the um, first place, Daniel mentioned before the national statistics, but Taryn can speak more to the international statistics of food waste. Absolutely. So, um, as you can see, uh, in 2018, 1 1.3 billion tons of food was thrown out, which is roughly equivalent to one-third of all of the food that was produced, which unfortunately could have been put towards something like feeding 1.6 billion starving people. And if we take a look at it from an economical standpoint, it did cost the world roughly $990 billion US, which roughly translates into $1.3 trillion Canadian. On top of that, the Drawdown Project actually claims that food waste is the third largest contributor to global warming, being responsible for about 8% of all global emissions. And so when we waste food, not only are we wasting the energy, resources, time, money, labor, and packaging that went into it, but we are also contributing to global warming. And we recognize that this is a serious issue, which is why it was really important for us to come up with an idea to combat food waste. And I can confidently say that that is why the four of us stand here today. Mark, did you have one? Yes. There's a great deal of concern over uh, plastic. Uh, it's in the news. Uh, many municipalities are moving to restrict plastic bags and so forth. So I'm, I'm wondering, in terms of your analysis and your research, there could be, and, and it seems as though we're heading that way, a move away from hard plastic on which you're going to find uh, barcodes to folks going into grocery stores with their own bags, just picking up their produce and going home and putting it in the fridge. Uh, I don't, I'm not looking at you to predict the future, but uh, how have you factored this into your, into your business plan? You're absolutely correct. We found that while barcodes are the system of the now, in the future, we've actually considered that the RFID tags are what are going to take over. You can already see this in the retailer industry, such that they have marked all of their clothing in order to better their inventory system, for example, such that they can track all of their information. This is going to be similar in the grocery market in the years to come. Primarily, you can already see these examples in uh, the UK as well as China, where there's fully automated, whole, entirely RFID tags. This being the case, we have uh, predicted that with the introduction of RFIDs into the mainstream, especially grocery markets, we can only predict further uh, penetration into the market, as now we have an even more seamless process where we can skip the barcodes altogether and get right into the scanning and the tracking of the inventory of your fridge. Here we have Rob and then Alex. Um, nice presentation. Uh, my question is with respect to the recipes and the algorithms that we'll be creating them. Um, where are you getting them and how will it work? Um, say, for example, you have some blueberries and they're about to expire. Uh, how will the algorithm determine which recipe to provide the, uh, the consumer? That's also an excellent question. So in terms of the product itself, as mentioned before, so everything will be tagged. So the um, algorithm itself will already know what's in your fridge. 
such that, like you mentioned before, let's say there's um, there are blueberries in that fish nearly ready to expire. As such, because there are keywords that we've been utilized, especially using databases that we've already referenced to, especially those that are um, FDA approved, as such that consumers can see all of their information, both nutritionally and otherwise, we will also compound that with um, keywords, so blueberries, and then we will use those databases, especially those recipe databases, to search in similar ones, as well as counter uh, factor in staple um, food items that anyone has in their home, as well as other items within this very fridge, such that they can create the perfect recipe to make sure that they reduce as much food waste as possible. Alex, do you want to take the next one? Thank you for the presentation, high energy and a very important problem as a mother of three, I can tell you that I don't know what lives and grows in my fridge. <laughs> I try and deal with it every time I can, but um, this would be helpful indeed. The um, question I had was how do you get to deal with like partially filled milk cartons or quasi-empty containers and people who exit things from the fridge and don't track that it no longer exists because it was eaten? Um, so, how would you uh, monitor all of the information around what actually happens after the initial barcode? And I'm not entirely clear that all barcodes include an expiry date, and so wouldn't that require some manual entry anyway? So, in terms of that, again, um, in, in when it comes to in terms of the product itself and the tagging, what we have identified is Following, let's say you've thrown out that carton of eggs and you are done with it, what you can do is still utilize that RFID tag, put it back into the reader, it'll wipe the data, and it'll allow you to use the next, uh, use it on the next item that you may put in your fridge. As such, the, because the reader no longer receives that carton of eggs, it will also be erased from the app, but it will retain it in its history, knowing that you are a great fan of eggs. As well, in terms of your secondary question, um, in, so when it comes to knowing um, the comings and goings, again, it is a, it's a finite system in the sense that we know that when you have consumed it and when you haven't. And in terms of the expiration dates, like I mentioned before, these databases also include um, expiration dates, primarily because on um, the FDA approved websites and databases, it is mandatory for all consumers to know the information of their food, such that this includes expiration dates. And if there isn't any, we will generate some based on estimations, including that um, on those FDA sites as mentioned before. 